Hello, welcome to The Wandering Drew. I am Drew. Thank you so much for joining me. It's mid-August, um, in between hikes, and to me that's the perfect time to kind of reassess your equipment and see what's been working for you, what hasn't been working for you, and make changes. And that's exactly what I do. So I'm in between adventures, planning what my next one is going to be, and I wanted to make some changes after my last hike on the CNO Canal. And one of those changes is something that I usually don't cover on this channel, but something that I wanted to make a change. So I'm going to discuss what change that was in this video because it didn't work out for me. I purchased a piece of equipment that I was hoping would enable me to take better quality videos and bring them to you on this channel. It just didn't work out that way. I feel like most of you, I probably watch a lot of YouTube hiking videos by other hikers. And I'm always interested in what they're doing, not just in the hike itself, but as a person that's learning how to you know, use this medium, YouTube, and record stuff. I'm always interested in the setup that they're using. So that includes the type of camera they're using, sometimes even the lenses, especially the audio equipment, and even what program they're using to do editing and posting of their videos online. I find that information helpful to me as I continue to learn and grow, because I realize that I'm not very proficient at this at all, and I'm learning. Uh, every video that I do how to do things a little better or a little faster or, or make some changes so getting that information from a lot of other videos is helpful to me and fortunately a lot of youtubers do include that information either in their show notes or eventually they make a video where they show the equipment that they use in order to record and Put up their videos so that is very helpful to me so i thought it was time that i probably did something similar along the same lines but for me it was a piece of equipment that i purchased hoping it would work for me but it didn't on july 30th of 2021 i ordered the dji pocket rocket 2 creator combo pack off of amazon the total cost was about just under 535 dollars and i selected this item after i returned from my hike and I did a lot of research. On the CNO, I use the DJI Osmo 4 and I found this gimbal very useful. I think it produces a uh, good quality. It definitely stabilizes it, but it is a little bulky and I had trouble finding a place to store it with my pack and everything else that I carry. So I ended up carrying it pretty much for the first two days in my hand while hiking. And while it is easy to use and convenient, it's still quite bulky and takes up room. And I would find more often than not, just the time taken to start it up and then get it going, I would tend not to use it. I found it much easier. And while I really love the magnetic grip, I found it much easier to just use my cell phone in my hand and shoot freehand. So eventually I stopped carrying this in my hand, stored it away, and put it in my backpack where it basically stayed in a pocket which is not easy to reach. So therefore I ended up not using it a lot. So I was looking for something that would probably be a little bit smaller, a little more user friendly, and the Pocket Rocket 2 seemed to be a good fit for that. Now I admit that just taking out my cell phone and using it is me being lazy. I do want to use the gimbal more often. I plan on it, I think about it, but I just tend not to use it. 
I also want to take more with what is called b-roll shots you know of me walking along the trail either to the camera or from the camera or across you know a nice view and put those um, videos or clips in the video so it's not just me talking um, but I'm a lazy hiker when it comes to going back and either repositioning my camera or picking it back up I don't want to go over the same territory twice so I know it's something I need to do it's something I want to do I just sometimes forget to do it after I'm done with the hike and when I'm editing the video I always regret doing this but I still just didn't make the effort on this trip when I returned I decided to research and look for another product that I thought would make it easier for me to do some of those things and the pocket rocket 2 seemed to fit that bill I wanted the stabilization either of a gimbal itself or of the image I believe and I hopefully think you'll see as well in the quality of videos that stabilized video whether it's from you know in-camera stabilization or on a stabilized gimbal just looks much better it's more watchable it's easier to watch some of my earlier videos and some videos I've seen from other hikers to me is very hard to follow sometimes it's unwatchable even it's painful to almost watch I know some of my videos I've taken them out or not even used them because I find just watching them is just so um, unnerving it's jarring or it, it, it's almost like getting you sick in watching the bouncing around it's not a usable image. so the pocket rocket 2 with its very small size but it's stabilized gimbal does an excellent job in this and I figured that would be a great product to have the pocket rocket 2 also had another necessary item that I feel is important when doing video and that's audio audio to me sometimes is just as important if not more important than video if I watch someone's video but the narration is good even if the video is kind of bad I'll stick with it but if the audio quality is bad sometimes even if it's a good video I might tune out or change it so I felt the audio was very important and the pocket rocket 2 was touted as a great upgrade from the pocket rocket 1 in that it now had four microphones already included on the gimbal itself additionally with the creator combo pack you have a um, additional asset in that you have a wireless microphone that is already pre-synced up with the gimbal and therefore will automatically take your audio and place it onto your video for you both the gimbal and the wireless microphone have the ability to connect an external microphone like a lavalier mic which would improve the audio even more and I frequently use a lavalier mic in recording my videos so I felt that that was another plus so I can use the wireless microphone even though I have one already and it was pre-synced up so it seemed to be a good fit so that's a quality um, that I was looking for in the ability to increase the audio quality as well so to recap basically it's small size it's stabilization it's good video quality and supposed good audio quality all seem to make this what I thought would be a very good fit for what I was looking to do and as I said I watched numerous videos and reviews and they were all pretty favorable there were very few that were not favorable to the pocket rocket 2 and there are a couple of shortcomings on it but all of them pretty much touted how great the audio was and the video well I received the item I did a couple of test videos with it and I actually recorded one of my videos which has already been posted online using the pocket rocket 2 and as much as I wanted to like this item I just didn't didn't work for me the first thing was that I found several times that the tracking which is a good asset to have I feel and the Osmo 4 does do that with your cell phone using software of following me was lacking frequently it would just come off my face especially when I do these videos I usually have notes in front of me and I look down and look back up and then continue recording and talking it would frequently unacquire me or lose my face and it would either go off in an odd direction sometimes when I look back at the camera it would reacquire me but a lot of times it would not at all and if it would not reacquire my face I had to now actually touch the screen lock it back on me 
and then record my video. If it lost my face every time I checked my notes, I would be doing this several times over the video, which became a nuisance, in my opinion. So if I kept reasonably still, the tracking would work. And depending on if even if I moved outside in the yard, it would work. But if it was locked onto my face, or sometimes even if you moved unpredictably, it would kind of lose you and have to reacquire you. So it didn't work perfectly, but it was workable. The other issues I had with uh, Pocket Rocket 2 is the screen is very, very small on the gimbal itself. It's very hard to work in detail on it. So I would not obviously have a lot of trouble using it to, let's say, edit a video or to really compose a shot. Now, you can attach your cell phone to the gimbal. It does have an attachment for that, but it makes it a lot bulkier. I decided to use a cable, which allowed me to put my phone in a different location or lay it down so it was less bulky and not as much weight on the gimbal itself. And I feel that works a little better, but this also defeats the reason why you're getting this small, tiny gimbal in the first place. If you have to attach your phone to it, also, there's an application that you can use to control the gimbal and the camera, which I think is great. But much like almost every camera that you have now that has uh, some sort of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi capability, that would mean I would need to leave my phone on in order to use it. Well, when I'm backpacking, I tr traditionally keep my phone in airplane mode because I'm trying to save battery power. Additionally, that would use extra power on the camera as well. So while those are good um, tools to have, and I see them as being limited for a backpacker because I don't want to generally keep them on because they use additional power. And power is usually something I have a limited amount of while hiking. So while I think it's great for if you want to get a group shot or maybe a shot of yourself from far away, you set up something, you know, like of a Vista and you can control it and possibly save using up some you know, memory on your card in exchange for battery power. But I think that has limited usage for me while I'm backpacking. While I'm around town, or if I have the ability to charge up and it, that battery power is not an issue, I think that's a great asset. So for most ordinary vloggers, I think that would be a great asset. So for me, I don't think that works very much because every time I take my phone out of airplane mode, I have to reacquire the camera, sync them, and get them going again and start the app. So it uses up a lot more battery power than I would normally use while hiking. I found the documentation that came with the Pocket Rocket 2 severely lacking. There were some things that were not even described at all in the manual. And I had to watch videos or learn about them from watching other videos reviewing or setting up the Pocket Rocket 2. One example is the sound. I found the sound quality to be lacking Everybody else raved about how good the sound quality was, so I figured I must be doing something wrong. So after watching several videos, I found there was a whole page that you could access, that you could select and choose which microphones and how the microphones were using. Also, it had a tracking feature using sound, which is great, but I didn't find it to be, work very good for me. But that description of how to get to that page to set it up is not even in the manual that I had that came with it, the documentation that came with it. You have to go out and find it elsewhere. That's a big problem in my opinion. All the information should be included in the documentation for someone. But I found the audio quality to be not that good. I found it to be low, sometimes inaudible. I couldn't hear it even if I turned my volume all the way up. It's not suitable for my videos in my opinion. So even after using the wireless microphone, which made it better, but still was unusable, at times the audio would drop out it would sometimes sound very tinny, or it would spike up. And if I have to go through that much trouble to get this product to work, I had to record one of my videos five times. The fifth try I actually used and posted. But I don't wanna waste that much time or effort in recording my videos. My time is important to me, and if you're out on the trail, sometimes you can't go back and re-record something because you're no longer there. When you find out that the audio is bad, you just have to work with it. So I found the audio to be unreliable and at times unpredictable, contrary to what a lot of the other reviewers had said. And even after I changed several settings, it still didn't seem to work for me. Another issue was how it looked in terms of video quality. The quality was there, but I got like a fisheye look from it. 
The field of view is quite wide. It's much improved over the original Pocket Rocket. And I felt that unless I had the camera at a certain distance, it recorded too much, had that fisheye look. Now that's just a byproduct of placing the camera near you. And I used it on a tripod or on a uh, piece of um, furniture to get the distance. So I could obviously move it closer or move farther away. So that's not really a negative, but I don't like that like wide view of a fisheye that I seem to get with it. So I realize it's for close and personal vlogging, so you need that wide view to get some surroundings behind you. So just something preference that I didn't like. Additionally, the Pocket Rocket 2 gets pretty hot while you're recording. I recorded in high definition, not 4K, which it does do, and the Pocket Rocket got very, very hot, uncomfortably hot in my hand. Not unbearable, I, but you definitely know you're holding something that's getting hot. So that was a concern. I worry about taking this out on a hot day in the summer, maybe uh, hiking. So in addition to the ambient temperature being very hot, if the gimbal itself is heating up, would it shut down or would it still be able to do what I'm asking it to do? So that was a concern of mine as well. Now I realize anytime you buy a piece of new equipment, it's gonna take a little while to get used to it, to build up proficiency. And I'm sure this item is no exception. I just found that for all these reasons, it just didn't work for me. I actually think that if they made the gimbal a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier, they would find that it's much more usable. I think a little bit more weight and a little bit more heft would actually improve the ability to use it. It would have it um, easier to hold, although you would get tired because of the weight, but I think it would just be easier to hold. I also think perhaps a larger screen would really be something that would be more useful. That's just me, but a lot of people like this product, and I'm not gonna say it's a bad product, it's just not a good fit for me. I decided to return the Pocket Rocket 2 and purchased another item. And that item, which is another camera, is something that I'm hoping to take out on the trail with me. Now I do have a camera that I have taken out on the trail before. It's a Lumix camera, it's a micro 3 fourths, so it's a mirrorless camera. So they're much lighter in weight than your standard DSLR camera, which I've had in the past and I've gotten rid of to get one of these, which are much lighter, but they're still quite heavy and bulky. So I decided to buy another camera, which is much bigger than the Pocket Rocket 2, but is much smaller than this one. But it's also a Lumix Micro 3 fourths camera, which gives me the ability to use a lot of the lenses that I have. And because the lenses are usually small and light, they're not as heavy as it would be a normal lens. So even if I brought two lenses with me, it still weighs less than a camera and a lens would be in a regular DSLR. Additionally, it has camera stabilization, so I get a little bit of the benefit. Not as good as this one is, or the better higher end ones, but it does have some stabilization, which would hopefully smooth out a lot of those bumps so you're not feel like you're rocking up and down on the sea and getting sick watching the video. So I'm experimenting with that camera over the next few weeks. I'm hoping to take it on my next trip. So I'm actually using that camera that I purchased to record this video. And this is really the second time I'm using it to record a video. Uh, I did a couple of test shots with it. Like the way it came out, like the audio, I'm not using any microphone so I can see how it's gonna come out if I was out in the woods without a microphone on. So hopefully the audio quality is good. I like the audio quality, I like the video quality, I have the ability to use an external microphone if I want, a lavalier mic or a wireless mic, so it does give me a little bit of flexibility. And I'm looking forward to using this camera out on the trail. I just have to accept that I'm probably going to have to make the effort and use the camera out on the trail, take my videos and record some other shots and have to double back a little bit. And I think if I do that a couple of times, I'll just become used to it and accept it. I think I may still take, or I'll still use the Osmo 4 on occasion. Uh, I like the quality and the convenience of using it. I like being able to use my cell phone at times, but being able to save the battery on this thing is important to me because I'm usually using it for navigation as well. So I like the idea of having uh, multiple resources that I can use so not just running down the battery and the, uh, taking photos and audio. 
um, NVIDIA with this. I may end up taking both the camera and the gimbal, but I'll have to see. It's something I'll have to explore over the next few weeks. Obviously, weight being my concern, I'm usually trying to go a little lighter, and if I can save myself three quarters of a pound, I'm probably gonna do that. So while the Pocket Rocket 2 didn't work for me, obviously it's working for a lot of people out there, all the positive reviews, and obviously sales haven't slowed down. So it's obviously working for some people, just not for me. And I just wanna point out, DJI does make some good products, and obviously, I like the Osmo 4, I have it, I have purchased it, and I have kept it. So I'm not against the company, they didn't pay me or sponsor me in any way. I paid for the gimbal, both the Pocket Rocket 2 and the Osmo 4 out of my own money. I just didn't see myself keeping it, and with all the equipment that I've purchased over the last two years of doing these videos, and it's a lot, trust me, uh, I just didn't see that I wanted to keep the amount of money that I spent for it tied up in it and figured it would go it would just sit in a box and not get used so for that reason I returned it and utilized the money that I paid for the pocket rocket 2 to purchase the camera that I'm now going to be using and I'm using to record this video and I'm still hopeful that that item will perform well but initially it looks like that item is a keeper so I hope you like this video I appreciate you taking time out of your day to join me. As always, please leave a comment below. I'd really love to learn what some of you people are using for camera equipment. If you're recording separate audio or you're just using in-camera audio and maybe some ideas or suggestions of what you're doing and how you're editing and posting your videos. Like I said, all these things help me streamline my process when I'm out on the trail. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch these videos. If you feel so inclined, please leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and as always, thank you so much for joining me. Till we meet again.